As, you know, I've seen sometimes on a path of devotional service, it's very easy to get distracted. You know, we think we are, you know, focused on our service or serving Krishna, but then all of a sudden, you know, we are involved in so many different things, you know, worrying about how many people we're going to attract to the program, or, you know, how many people we're going to impress with our kirtan, or, um, you know, who is all going to glorify our prashadam, or, you know, things like that. And those are like subtle thoughts that may come to our mind, and you may not, you know, I'm sure none of us go consciously like, oh yeah, you know, I'm just going to today make it all about me, <laughs> you know, but those things, those thoughts, they creep in, and uh, what's even worse, you know, like I said, we don't even realize that we've been sidetracked, so let me ask you a question, have you ever, those of you that are students, or even if you're working, have you ever, like, been preparing for the exam? And then all of a sudden you find yourself like reading some completely unrelated article on the internet. Let me see if anybody had an experience like that or doing something completely unrelated. You know? And then all of a sudden you're wondering, like, how, you know, how did I even end up there? We don't even remember. Yeah. You know, how did we get to that point? You know, it's just like all of a sudden we're doing something that we're not supposed to be doing. Versus, you know, it's the same thing in devotional life, we sometimes find ourselves into a situation, you know, especially when chanting, you know, japa. It's like, you can see sometimes devotees do so many different things while chanting. You know, it's like, let me sweep the temple room, and, you know, I'm going to talk with this person, and then chant a couple mantras, and then talk some more, or, you know, maybe watch TV, or, you know, just like different things like that. So, uh, I was listening to a pod by my spiritual master, his name is Shidhar Swami, um, and he was explaining how we become so involved in this superficial task like, that we completely forget you know, that we're supposed to be doing this for Krishna. You know, it's not about how many people are going to have listened to our class or how many people are going to you know, jump in our kirtan or you know, who is all going to sing the glories of prashadam all over Columbus. You know. It's not about that, but sometimes we get so preoccupied with those things like, you know, when you're cooking or something, you may think like, oh, you know, how can I make this so everybody's pleased that they will talk about, you know, and it comes subtle. So, um, basically we have to be very careful, you know, in our devotional life then, so that we don't get, you know, sidetracked like that uh, without realizing, you know, it's natural because we're not, in a pure state yet, that we are going to get sidetracked, but we should realize that that's happening. We shouldn't just be unconsciously, you know, floating around and then be like one day wake up like, oh, you know, what happened? <laughs> you know, so, um, as I said, you know, when we are studying or working, we have had this experience where we got distracted and, you know, completely ended up doing something different. So, it is explained in scriptures that the main reason why we came to this material world because, is because our envy. We were envious of Krishna and we wanted to be the enjoyers. So we were envious of God and we wanted to enjoy separately from Him. So that was the you know, downfall of our um, arrival or, or our non-stay in spiritual world, so to say. But um, obviously, you know, because this envy caused us to come here is very deeply rooted within us. You know, it's not something that's going to go away overnight and we sometimes think like, oh, you know, I've been chanting for, you know, two months. Like, why, why, you know, or two years or five years. And what is Srila Prabhupada saying? How many years it took him to perfect the chanting? You know, for Forty years. Yeah, forty-something, right? So Prabhupada said, you know, one time he was asked, and I'm not exactly sure of number, so don't quote me, but it was somewhere in that range. What? 40? Okay, so he did say that it took him 40 years to, you know, perfect chanting. And Prabhupada was born in devotee family. Many of us didn't have that fortune to be born in devotee families, especially here in the West. You know, we didn't have that fortune. And then... You know, who knows how long it's going to take us. So we cannot be impatient with ourselves and we cannot, you know, just ignore, uh, you know, this, this 
things, the subtle things that come up in our spiritual lives. So um, I want to read a verse in chapter 4, which talks about one of our enemies. So before I get to reading the verse, I just want to clarify. So this real enemy that I'm talking about is ourselves. It's nobody else on the outside. And I'm not talking about ourselves as spiritual souls, no. Ourselves as conditioned souls who are attracted to material energy and who have mind, minds that's most often our enemy than our friend. And in Bhagavad Gita, it is said, um, let's see, chapter 6, text 5. Is it? Okay, so I'm just going to read the um, translation. Okay, so in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, one must deliver himself with the help of his mind and not degrade himself. The mind is a friend of the conditioned soul and his enemy as well. So, um, pervert of his divine grace, Shiva Prabhupada. The word Atma denotes body, mind, and soul, depending upon many different circumstances. In yoga system, the mind and conditioned soul are especially important. Since the mind is the central point of yoga practice, Atma here refers to the mind. The purpose of yoga system is to control the mind and drive it away from attachments to sense objects. It is stressed herein that mind must be so trained that it can deliver the conditioned soul from the mere from the mire of nations. In material existence, one is subjected to the influence of the mind and the senses. In fact, the pure soul is entangled in material world because the mind is involved within the, with a false ego, which desires to lord it over material nature. Therefore, the mind should be trained so that it will not attract the glitter of material nature, and this way the conditioned soul may be saved. One should not degrade oneself by attraction to sense objects. The more one is attracted by sense objects, the more one becomes entangled in material existence. The best way to dis disentangle oneself is to always engage the mind in Krishna consciousness. The word he is used for emphasizing this point, that one must do this. It is also said, for man, mind is the cause of bondage, and the mind is the cause of liberation. Mind absorbed in sense objects is the cause of bondage, and mind detached from sense objects is the cause of liberation. That's in Atma Bindu Upanishad, number two. Um, therefore, the mind which is always engaged in Krishna consciousness is the cause of the supreme liberation. So, here we heard again what I mentioned, that mind can either be our best friend or our worst enemy, depending how we manage to engage the mind. If we are just drawn to our objects of sense gratification and we are not you know, trying to control the mind, and we're always going to be running up our happiness and looking for it in you know, places where there's no happiness. So, or we try, you know, the same thing over and over. Again, it hasn't worked for so many people and for so long, but still, yet here we are trying the same thing as everybody else is trying, and it's still not working. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> so, um, you know, like I said, we have so many enemies that we can talk about in the material world. You know, there's like wars happening, there's things that can happen, you know, natural disasters that can, you know, cause us distress and hurt us. There's other people that can hurt us. There's our bodies that can, you know, fall, be impacted by, infected by disease or, you know, some kind of calamity, and that can cause us trouble. So there's like all these things, but it can also be our minds that cause us troubles. So in order to overcome and conquer all these conditionings that we have in the material world, there has to be some kind of solution, right? I'm not just going to talk about this, and then we're all going to just sit here and lament, like, oh, you know, so horrible. <laughs> so. Um, it is explained that in order to overcome these things, one has to develop faith. And not just any kind of faith. It has to be permanent faith, like stable faith. Like faith that's going to keep us around for a long time. Not just type of faith like where we have faith till things go our way and then as soon as something happens, like, oh no, forget that, you know, I'm going my own way. So 
we often see uh, that you know someone may be Kanisha Rikari or the new devotee or a beginner and uh, have some basic faith because that's necessary in order for us to start practicing spiritual life. We have to have some kind of faith, right? We're not just gonna like you know not have any.